Hello, this is John Sims with the Advised Serviceability Engineering Team. This video will cover IP Office Release 8.1 or greater SSL VPN onboarding, making use of the global registration tool delivered onboarding XML file. Before we get started, first a few notables. If technical registration, otherwise known as onboarding back to Avaya, is required, the global registration tool will send the onboarding XML file to the registration contacts via email. This is triggered from an important question during registration that if the Avaya remote connectivity required now question is answered yes. Then the final email received from global registration tool will contain the SSL VPN onboarding file which can be uploaded into the IP office system either an IP 500 V2 or the mid-market Linux servers running release 8.1 or greater. As a reminder, here we are in the global registration tool and here's the question I spoke of just moments ago. Via remote connectivity required now. If you answer yes to this question, then GRT will generate an onboarding XML file and send it back via email to the registrants of record, including an on-site contact that was provided. As you see in my inbox, you'll have three messages from GRT, including this final message that technical registration has been completed. As you see me highlight that there. And you'll see there's an attached IP office onboarding XML file, which you should save to your file system. So making use of this onboarding file is actually quite remarkably simple. Simply point your web browser to the LAN IP address of the IP office unit and you'll see you'll get a certificate warning. So you'll continue on through that warning message and you'll select IP office web management. Again you may receive a certificate warning to select continue through and the IP office web manager will load as you see. You simply provide your administrator account with the proper administrator password and log in to the web management side of the system configuration. Then you head to tools, you'll see at the top bar there, tools onboarding, and that'll pull up the onboarding applet once again. Now you've already provided the inventory file to GRT and registered the IP office, and now it's time to make use of this GRT delivered onboarding file. So you'll hit browse and find this onboarding file on your file system as you see me finding it here and then I'll select it and once it's selected you simply upload it to the IP office and the IP office will come back and if everything's successful tell you that everything is successful you hit OK and you log out of web management and you're done. So now it's time to check into a configuration of the IP office unit and see what has been accomplished. So I pull the configuration in IP Office Manager and I head to Service. You'll see there's an Avaya Underbar Support. That's the default name of the Avaya support service for this VPN tunnel. Again, the account name is the alarm ID and there's an encrypted password that's been pulled into the configuration. We're pointing to the production or one of the production AVG servers. You see the server type is always AVG and we're bound to port 443 for the SSL connection. Under the session tab you'll leave all of this alone unless instructed to make changes from Avaya support and then there's a fallback option. Fallback option means simply to put the tunnel out of service. So in order for Avaya to have access to this device it should be unchecked left alone. Again if you check this box and I'll show you how to control through SSA in a moment that will put the tunnel out of service. Now as you see it's time to head to the short code section of the configuration tree. I'm going to pull this center bar over to give us more room and you see that the star 7751 and star 77510 has been delivered into the configuration and that again is to give you system short code control of the Avaya support SSL VPN service. Now keep in mind if you're a business partner and you plan to host your own AVG gateways and then you can have a via support as well as your own you can build your own short codes to control your own service name. So again this is an example for a via VPN 
control and it's been delivered by the onboarding file. So let's continue our discovery using system status application, otherwise known as SSA. I'll log in with the administrator account. It'll pull data from the IP office unit. And as you see here, if I expand IP networking, we now have a new SSL VPN um, section. And I'm going to expand that out. You'll see there's the Avaya support tunnel. It's in service. If we click into it further, you'll see we get a whole bunch of information including where we're pointed at again it's in service the account name the address of the AVG that we're pointing to the tunnel IP address which is very useful to have that information so you see a whole bunch of good information here on this form and at the bottom of the screen we could set the tunnel into fallback and it gives you a warning do you really want to do this confirm yes if you do this you're turning the tunnel off so do this from the LAN side and not through the tunnel itself, obviously. Um, we're controlling this through the LAN side, so we still have access to the unit. And then we can set the tunnel back in service. You see it doesn't come immediately back in service. It, you have to wait for a heartbeat to occur again, and then it'll initiate the tunnel. I'll go ahead and click out. And if we click back in, actually give it a little bit of time, you'll see that if I let it sit here it takes some seconds or so here and then you see the tunnel IP address reestablish itself as the tunnel has then reestablished itself between the AVG and the IP office unit in this case. A quick note about this tunnel speed is predicated by or controlled by the bandwidth available to it through the customer network and the internet but in, on a good solid connection this tunnel is very fast to transact data through the IP office unit can support a very high number of concurrent tunnels and all of the IP office tool sets management tool sets will work and transact through this tunnel now staying in SSA I'm going to head to IP networking back again and then to IP routes and it's interesting to point out that there are dynamic routes that are created now for these SSL VPN tunnels. So you'll see these four IP routes have been created based on next hop evaluations. That is all created dynamically on the IP office unit. In fact, if we take a step back now into the IP office manager and we look at IP routes, you'll see there are four IP routes set. Those are static routes that have been set based on the customer network configuration or the LAN side configuration. So now that we've noted those routes, let's step back once again to SSA. And you can now note the difference in the IP route type column. There's directly attached routes, then there's static routes that have been set, and then you see the four SSL VPN tunnel routes that have been set. And again, these are dynamically assigned by the IP office unit. So one last test now in SSA is a ping test on the IP office SSL VPN tunnel. So if we head to IP networking SSL VPN Avaya support, we note that tunnel address 16.40. And if we go back to IP routes, we have a ping applet that we can launch. Again, we can ping this tunnel address and I'll let it run real time. You'll see it'll respond in about two to three seconds. And there we have that we sent three packets and we received all three. None were lost and we see the min, max, and average times in milliseconds. Again, noting the private tunnel IP address assigned to this IP office unit. We click OK and this concludes our demonstration. Thank you for your time today. We welcome comments, questions, and feedback at mentor at avaya.com or on Twitter at Avaya Mentor. For more details or related information, please visit support.avaya.com. Thank you for choosing Avaya.